What's up divas and what's up divos? Of course you know it's your girl April and it is Real Talk Wednesday. So I'm doing this video kind of late in the evening. It is 8, 12 here. So I have to rush and get this edited, which takes me like five minutes, and then get it uploaded so that you guys can have it Wednesday morning. So first things first, I decided to come on with my head wrap because it was a lazy day. You know, you have those lazy days when you just don't want to do anything. You don't want to put on your hair. You barely want to put on your makeup. And I actually did that just for the video um, while I was talking to my girl Shay Love, who's also on YouTube. So if you've never checked her channel out, she is Miss Shay Love, and she's been on YouTube for quite some time. So make sure you check her out. She has this bubbly attitude, but she's really, really a cool down-to-earth person. Plus, she's very genuine. She's real. She's authentic. If she does not like something, she does not like it. So make sure you check her video out. And I'll definitely post the link below for her as well. So, yeah, as I was doing my makeup, I was talking to her on the phone. So it was really great to catch up with her. We've been friends for years. So we haven't spoken to each other probably like a year. Because, you know, life happens. We go through things. So, And she lives in the next state. So hopefully we'll get to see each other soon. But, yes, check her channel out. Other than that, I did my makeup with the Morphe's new 35F palette, which I just did a makeup haul video on. And I will tell you girls this, this is one gorgeous palette, like on some realness. These colors are so rich, so pigmented, and they're just so, so pretty. So I did my makeup with that today, or this evening rather, and it's a really great palette. I really do like this one a lot. This is the third palette that I have by them. I have the K and I think it's the T or what have you. But this is the newer one and it's very pretty. The bottom row, which is the bottom, I have it upside down, is all matte. And the rest of them are like shimmery colors, metallic-like, but really pretty palettes. So, yes, $22. You cannot beat that. So, for my entire eye look, hopefully you girls can see that. I did that. And I got some glow going on. Um, I did use my ColourPop monster highlight which I love like and on top of that I do have on candlelight glow by Too Faced I do have that on and I carved out my cheeks with also my ColourPop um, bronzer matte bronzer so that's what I got going on today and some ColourPop Pop lipstick liquid lipstick which you girls know I love this color this is like one of my favorite colors right now so yes, other than that, there really hasn't been anything new. Just enjoying life, lazy day. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to get into this video. If you have a Real Talk video that you want to be read on camera about yourself, life situation, someone you may know, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line Real Talk so that I know it is an official Real Talk video. And other than that, um, I do have a bunch of new videos coming out. I went and recorded like, I think it was like 9 or 10 videos yesterday. I didn't went. I went. I sat in my room and recorded all those videos yesterday. And, um, and they're very affordable hair. So, yes, be in store for that. I will have a video like uploaded every day. And I've been doing that a lot lately because I've been trying to catch up so much on videos. I have like so far behind. And other than um, the video recording, um, I will be 42 this Sunday on Father's Day. 42 years old. And I'm excited because I get um, two days, two celebrations in one. My birthday and Father's Day. My kids always acknowledge me on Father's Day. Um, always. Because, you know, I'm a single mother. And I am both parents to them. So I will have, like, this big surprise that I'm not aware of. Which my grandson and his mother, Tati, have planned out for me. And I have to be ready by 1130. Um... I was just going to sit at home and lay up and relax and maybe make a wig or two. But but I really wanted to go see Finding Dory on my birthday. Um, so, yeah, that's out of the question. But maybe on Monday, the following day, because I really do want to see Finding Dory. I really do like to go to kids' movies because I have kids and a grandson. So I was really looking forward to going to Finding Dory on my birthday. But I guess, you know, it'll have to wait till the next following day because it's for Father's Day. It's probably going to be crowded anyway. And I hate being in like a crowd of people, especially in a movie theater. You don't really get good seats. So yeah, so other than that, let's get into this video because it is real talk time. Okay, 
so I'm trying to get to four today. Um, let's see here. The first one, let's see. I know one of them is pretty long. And I think I'm going to save that one for last. So, April, I love your Real Talk Wednesdays. And I was wondering if you can help me with the situation I have. I am very family-oriented. And I'm always helping family in any way possible. I have a family member who is always borrowing money. It started last year in April. First, they asked to borrow $30. Then $50. Then it went up to $120. Now she does pay, now she does pay the money back when she gets paid. She has a real good paying job. But the thing is, she borrows it back. She borrows $120 every month. Gives it back to me. And my husband, and I, gives it back to me and my husband. And a week later, she asks for it back. This happens every month. My husband is tired of lending out money to, to get back. Just to give it back to her. My cousin has three roommates and they split the bills. So my husband doesn't understand how she's always broke and borrowing money. Seeing as she doesn't have to pay bills by herself, but her roommates don't help pay all the bills and she doesn't say anything to them. She just lets them slide and she pays the bills. There are times when she will call me later in the month after borrowing the money, $120, and ask if she could borrow more money. But me and my husband can't afford to give any more, so I tell her we don't have it. She always seems to need the money, so I just give her the $100 back every month. My husband wants to cut her off. No more borrowing. We have three kids, a house, and a dog. And he said that money can go towards things we need, but we can never spend it because she always borrows it back. It's my cousin, so he told me I need to cut her off. I just don't know how to tell her we can't help her anymore. Is my husband right? Should we cut her off? And how do I tell her she can no longer borrow money from us? If you could give me advice, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. So we're going to call her Monette. So Monette's issue is this. Her cousin is always borrowing money. Started off with $20, $30, $50, now it's up to $120. And her cousin Shelby has a really great job. And she has three roommates. But Shelby pays the money back, but then she borrows it right back. And her roommates are not paying all the bills, so she's left to pay all the bills. Shelby is left to pay all the bills, doesn't say anything to her roommates about it. She just will go and borrow it from Monette and Monette's husband. Yeah, she gives it back, but let me tell you something. It's cool if you loan somebody some money here and there as long as they give it back to you. But let's not make this into a fucking habit, you know what I'm saying? And this is the problem with Shelby. Just because you give me the money back doesn't mean that this has to be a constant thing where, okay, I know I can borrow it from Monette because she knows I'm going to give it back to her. So whatever the case may be, I may be broke or I may want something and it's probably going to make my pockets broke. But I always know that I can count on Monette because she'll loan it to me. Her and her husband will loan it to me. Her, her husband, her three kids will loan it to me because that money is the kid's money too, okay? So her... Monette, Monette's husband, and Monette's three kids will loan Shelby the money. And Shelby knows this because, of course, she has been doing this, peri peri not even periodically, but it's like an ongoing thing. This is like an ongoing, constant thing. And now Shelby is used to this. Well, I know that I can always put my hand out to Monette, and she'll, borrow, she'll loan it to me, and I'll always give it back to her when I get paid. Now, here's the thing. I'm sorry, Monette, that you are constantly going through this, but I don't like loaning nobody no money neither, let alone, how about loaning people your clothes? You got a job interview, and you borrowed something from me, and this bitch, um, this bitch was like a year ago, I still didn't get back my shit, I don't loan people shit no more because you don't get it back, now it's fine and dandy, you get it back, but here's the thing. I like my money when I like it. Meaning, I don't really want to go to... I don't really want my money to go out the motherfucking window. Okay? I like to keep it in my pocket or my bank account. And it's just like that. Yeah, true indeed, you're going to give it back maybe a week or two later. But why should I have to wait for my money? What if some type of emergency comes up for one of your children and you need your money? What if your pipes broke? Your cable went out? Your electricity got shut off? Anything can happen where you need you $120 or whatever amount of money you loaned her. You may need this money. So... 
family, it seems like sometimes family will take advantage of you because they always know that you'll be there and you'll help them out. They've always got their hand out. Oh, let me call it such and such because I know she got it. She'll, she's good for it. She'll loan it to me. She knows I'll give it back. But you know what? Shelby is taking this. She's This is a habit for her now. So she's taking your kindness into weakness, for one, because you're constantly doing this. And you don't have to cut her off because that is family. But, do she come around when she don't need money to borrow from you? Because if she only comes around and calls on you when she needs something, then you really need to rethink that situation too. Because for one, I don't like when people call me when they need something. Because that makes me feel some type of way. Like, oh bitch, you only need me when you need me. You call me when you fucking need me. You you beckon me when you fucking need me. You don't come around any other time. But when you need a couple of dollars, extra dollars in your pocket, I'm good for you. That's where I draw the line. I don't mind loaning people things, but then there's a time and a place for everything. I have kids, okay? I have four kids that live up here in Arizona with me and a grandson. I'm not about to loan anybody any money when one of my kids may need something. I'd rather loan it to my kids and not even loan it to them, but give it to them beside, before I give it to someone else. How I know you're going to be good for it. Okay, so you showed me good intentions with all these payments that you have given me. But now your your fee or your, bar, your borrowing amount has been going up and up and up. And $120 may not be a lot to some, but to me, it's hell of a fucking lot. Even if I had to loan you $20, that's $20 out of my pocket that I could have took my kids and got them something to eat. You know what I'm saying? We could have went out for dinner and got something to eat. It might have been one of those lazy fucking night or that could be a bill twenty dollars to a lot of people ain't a lot but twenty dollars can go a long way you can fill up my gas tank you know what i'm saying i i don't mind helping people but some people learn to take advantage of those if they see that you constantly giving them giving them giving them and you're not saying nothing about it then they're not gonna say nothing about it they're gonna constantly be in your pockets with their hand out. And as long as you allow this, they are going to continue this. Now, here's my thing. You want to find out what's the best way to tell her that we can't loan you any money? Any money? Okay. It is 8.30 here, damn near. This some lady just called me and asked me about some kind of ballot poll. Don't call my goddamn phone. So, anyway, like I was saying, people, as long as you continuously allow them, they are going to take and if you need to, excuse me, find the right way to tell her no, I cannot loan you anything, the right way is to tell her fucking no. The next time she'll be coming to you, Monette, uh, can you can you loan me $120? Listen, I am more than happy to help anybody out. But you know what? Me and my husband, we have three kids, a dog, and bills to pay. And I don't got it like that to be loaning you money all the time. I'm sorry, but I can't do this anymore. I can't do it point blank. You ain't got to beat around no butch bushes. You ain't got to turn over no stones. You ain't got to spare nobody their feelings. Because here's the thing. If she get mad with you and don't speak to you again or for a minute, then you already fucking know this is the reason why she been calling me. And you know her true intentions. You don't have to sh um, spice or sugar anything up, sweeten anything up for anybody. If you if you don't want to give them something and you've constantly been giving them something and now you are at your wit's end and you're tired of it, because we do get tired of people using us, tired of loaning people shit, tired of bullshit. You don't have to sweeten nothing up to tell anybody no. No means fucking no. Bottom line, point blank, period. Okay? If it were me and somebody kept borrowing from me, first of all, I'm going to let you borrow one time. When you give it back, that's it. I'm not going to keep allowing you to borrow from me. But had I allowed you to keep borrowing from me and I got tired of it, me and my significant other got tired of it, which I don't have, but just say me in general, April got tired of loaning you money, listen, I got bills to pay and I got kids to take care of. And I got a dog too, okay? My dog will be 10 years old tomorrow well wednesday when this video goes up my coco and uh, i ain't got to explain all of that to them but i don't you don't even have to explain nothing to them I, you don't have to tell anybody oh well, this is the reason why i'm not gonna do it you don't owe anybody any explanation of why you're not going to keep loaning the money fuck that why do i have to give you an explanation to the reason why i'm not going in my fucking pockets to give you any more of my money okay there's really no explanation for that. 
However, if you want to justify that and give her an explanation, you can let her know. Listen, Shelby, I'm more than happy to help you out or anybody else out. But me and my husband, we have three kids and we have bills to pay. And we don't have it like that to constantly be loaning out money. So I'm sorry, I don't have it. And leave it at that. Now, if she want to cuss you out and get on your bad side, then that's fine too because at least you know her true intentions. And that's when you can cut the bitch off. Okay. Now, I'm not saying cut her off now because that is family, but tell her fucking no. You can tell her what I told you to tell her, but me personally, no. Well, can I borrow? No, I don't have it. And I will just leave it at that. No, I don't have it. I'm not going to explain to you why I don't have it because I don't think you deserve that. I don't think I need to explain to you why I don't have it. I'm the adult here just as well as you. But you're really not an adult because you're constantly borrowing from me. You ain't got to say to her, well, why you ain't got it? You got roommates. You ain't even got to go into detail. All you basically have to say is, Shelby, I don't have it. We don't have it. We don't have it. A person really don't like to be told no. If you tell a person no once, it's kind of hard for them to come back and ask you again because you've already turned them down. So I guarantee you that once you tell her no, the next time she borrows from you or asks you to borrow, she's not going to ask you again because, for one, you've already let her down. And people really don't like to be let down, especially with the word no. Me, for one, I don't like people telling me no. That's why I don't ask people for shit, okay? But... People really don't like to get turned down. So this first no that you tell her is probably going to be the last no because she's probably not going to come back and ask you anymore. And if her feelings are in it and if she felt some type of way, then she's definitely not going to come back and ask you again because, for one, she's her true intentions was just to use you to borrow money. And some may, some may feel like, oh, well, she didn't use you because she, she pays it back. So fucking what she pays it back. She's still borrowing from me because she knows she can you know what I'm saying? Why not go to somebody else? Go to another family member. How about you go to your motherfucking roommates and ask them to borrow the money instead of coming to you? She has roommates. You and your husband don't have no roommates to split the bills with. It's you and your husband and your three kids and dog. She got a good paying job and some roommates. So therefore, she should not be broke. Okay? You split this down evenly. There's three roommates. You split this down. If it's three or four, you split it down evenly. And we all take a piece of the pie and we break it down evenly and we pay our portion. But no, I really don't think that she needs to keep borrowing for someone who has children. That's the worst thing in the world. I hate when people use people that have kids or the elderly like why are you taking advantage of people that really don't have it like that there are some people that do have it like that but that doesn't mean to take advantage of them once you tell a person no they really are not going to keep coming back at you just like this bitch that just called my phone asking me to some about some ball ballot parking or ballot ballot voting i hung up on her now bitch don't call me the fuck back because i just basically told you no by hanging up the phone people don't like to be discouraged so the bottom line is you can tell her uh, I'm sorry, but I don't have it. Just leave it at that. I'm sorry, but I don't have it. And you ain't really sorry, but you could just you break the break the ice. I'm sorry, I ain't got it. Me personally, I wouldn't even say sorry. I'd be like, oh, I ain't got it. I'm not about to explain to you why the fuck I ain't got it, cause I don't think that's your none of your fucking business. Why I ain't got to loan you shit? So tell her just like that, Monet, and stop loaning her shit. It's you, your husband, and your three children. When you want to borrow some money, can you go to her? <sighs> Probably not. What's she going to do? Loan you the money that you done loaned her? I mean, like, really. Or loan you the money that she's about to pay you to fuck back? On some real shit? Just let her know, I'm sorry, but I don't have it. And you ain't even got to explain to her. But if you feel the need to explain to her, then that's on you. But I guarantee you, the first no is going to be the last no because she's not going to come back after that, asking anymore. I know me personally, I wouldn't. I'm not going to keep asking somebody. When you tell me no one time, it's no. And that's that. I ain't fucking with you no more. And it ain't even that I'm not fucking with you no more, but I'm not going to ask you. I don't want to be turned down. I don't want to be let down. Bottom line. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Now, this one here. <clears throat> okay. Hi, April. I am new to your channel. Also, subscribe. You are so beautiful and full of wisdom. I like to think I was full of wisdom, but I don't even think it's wisdom. It's just the things that I have gone through in life that I'm able to share with you guys that I want to help you. Pre to, I want to help prevent you from making the same mistakes. So 
it's not about no wisdom. I just have been through enough shit in life to where I could share this with you guys and be able to tell you my stories or not even my stories, but relate to your stories and give you my personal opinions so that way you don't make the mistakes. But if you think I'm wise, then thank you so much. My situation may be kind of weird, but a little about me. I'm a Latin woman, a Latin woman, Latina. I'm a Latina woman, 29 years old, born and raised in Chicago. Sacrificed my love life, party life, and social life, friendships, for my schooling and my career, and did everything my parents wanted me to do. Yes, I made them proud. I'm content with my life, but can't say I'm happy. My life has no joy. I work and come back to a beautiful but empty home. I'm single with no kids. I don't really have female friends. I can do without that. However, I have dated some good men who I just couldn't fall in love with. I've dated within my race for a long time, but none have been the one. It's hard for me to fall in love with someone, and it's hard out there to find a man who is who has his own things. With that said, I decided recently to begin dating out of my race. I've never really been into white men. From a young age, I was teased by white boys for my skin color and my race, and I've developed a trauma of sorts to where I've always feared white men, especially dating them. As I got older, I tried to be more open-minded and gave some white men chances, but they always treated me like I was less or inferior, which is my nightmare. Us people of color, for the most part, are not born with a silver spoon in our mouth. But what I do have, I earned it myself, and I don't appreciate any man making me feel lesser. I find that white men do this to me a lot. I'm more attracted to a man with color, so I'm already forcing myself to date white men. The last man I dated for a few months was six foot three, an attractive white man who had his own house, a job, a car, you know, the basics. But I found that he was more obsessed with my looks than I, who I was. He was so arrogant about what he had, when I had my own things as well. He talked endless, endlessly about himself, and I couldn't even get a word in. I, dis I dislike when a man tries to impress me with material things. It makes me feel cheap and degraded as a woman. All of the white men I've given a chance to are like this. I blocked him on my phone, and a little disappointed, but not surprised. I've concluded that I will never find love just want to find a down-to-earth man who has his own things but doesn't have to brag about it 24-7. Dating outside of my race has not panned out. Am I wrong in wanting to go back to dating my race? Please help. So she didn't give me a name, so we're going to call her Latina. Okay? I just feel it's just right. Okay, we're going to call her Latina. So, 29 years old, single, no children, works, goes home to an empty home, beautiful home, she has only dated in her own race, Latina woman, and she has tried to have an open mind of dating white men because she's never dated outside of her race. But the white man that she has been dating is kind of arrogant, brags about what they have, tries to make her feel lesser than a person, and basically she's trying to, she's she's more or less forcing herself into dating outside of her race. Which to me, first of all, it's probably very uncomfortable. You never try to make yourself uncomfortable to be open-minded and and go outside the box. If you don't feel comfortable and you feel, you know what I'm saying, in the situation that you're in, then don't do it. Now, she wants to know, is she wrong for wanting to go back to dating only in her race? No. No. I'm going to be the first to say I've never dated outside of my race. I mean, well... He's, he was he was he was Hispanic. I've dated a Hispanic guy before, yes. Um, and I don't know, does that count to be in the side of my race because I'm half Italian and half black, so I don't really know. Does that count? I've never dated a white man before. I've never, never dated an Asian man. I've never, you know, really went outside of my race. I've never went outside my race. Um, and the reason for that, it's not like a particular reason, like, oh, I'm only going to date black men, or, you know what I'm saying? I've never felt like that. It's just... A lot of things happen because of the environment that you live in and the area where you live in. If you are, if you've grown up in the projects like myself and live in a predominantly black neighborhood or Hispanic neighborhood, then that's more or less what you see a lot. And that's what you end up dating or liking. It has nothing to do, I think, with race for a lot of people. Some people it may and some people it doesn't. But 
if you are forced to date outside of your race, meaning you're forcing yourself to date outside of your race, then that's, first of all, a no-no. Why would anybody want to force themselves to date someone that they really were not into? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, sometimes we can grow to love someone, but first of all, you got to start off somewhere. First of all, you got to start off feeling comfortable with the person. So I don't think you're wrong for, um, for going back to dating within your race because that's what you feel comfortable with. And that's what you're known. You know, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with that. Love really doesn't have a color. There's no skin color to love. And there's no um, sexual preference to love. You know what I'm saying? If you like women and you're a woman, then you like women. If you like men and you're a man, then you like men. And there shouldn't be, like, um, a title on any type of preference that you have or what you like. It just should be of what you like and what you prefer and what makes you feel comfortable as a person. Don't do something because of society. Just like with the situation in Orlando. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, my heart goes out to all of those people. It's so sad with this day and age that there's titles on everything. You know what I mean? And I hate the word, oh, well, that's a gay relationship. Why does it have to be a gay relationship? Why can't it just be a relationship? You know what I'm saying? Why does it have to be like a, this huge issue? Okay, they're both human beings. We're all human beings, regardless of who we love. You can never stop the heart from loving who you love, whether it's a bank robber, a serial killer, a white man, a man on man, a woman on woman, a man on dog, whatever. It's who you love, and it's what you feel in your heart. So I really don't think that this should be a title, and you should never feel bad about what you want in life or who you want to be with in life because at the end of the day it's you and that person and everybody else out in this world is out in this world they are behind closed doors they're not the ones that are making you the person that you are making you love making you feel good they're not the person that's making you happy on a daily basis so with society a lot of people put a lot of titles on society and it's just so sad because this is 2016 and a lot of times you see a lot of people well I don't want my family to know that I like women or I don't want my family to know that I like men I'm just gonna keep it a secret because we're always so worried about what other people think or how it's gonna make us feel as long as you feel comfortable within and who you're with, then you should never worry about what anybody else thinks and you should never feel like you're wrong, okay? Because if you have to go out there and force yourself to be with someone that you don't feel comfortable with and it's not your preference, then why do it? You know what I'm saying? You're just trying to fit in with society. And sometimes, yeah, there are men out there that don't come with their own shit. Trust and believe a bitch done had one and had to put him out. And he was a black man. Now, would I date a white man? Here's the thing. I am not racist. It doesn't matter to me what skin color you are, okay? Not at all. It does not matter. If you are black, you are white, you are Chinese, if you are female or a male. If you grasp my heart and you are genuine, then I'm going to care for you just as much as you care for me. You know what I'm saying? So... There are a lot of people out there, there are a lot of men out there who claim to be men and they have things and they brag about their car and they brag about their house and the money that they have or the big dick size that they got when it's like this. But anyway, that's another topic. And yes, that shit is very annoying. I could totally, totally relate to that. You know what I'm saying? Like, the one that I had to get rid of, my ex, he always... And he bragged about past tense shit. Like, nobody even liked you in the town of Schenectady. You always talking about, oh, you did this. Oh, you did that. Oh, you did this. Nobody didn't even like you, okay? Nobody liked you. You're talking about past tense shit. Now you're talking about, oh, you had all of this. You had all of that. How do I know this, okay? Okay, and the car you're talking about, it's like a 2004. It's 2016. Why are we even bragging about that shit? No big deal. Who gives a fuck? So, a lot of times when you see men that do things, that's just trying to impress you. But it does become annoying 
and it is more or less bragging and boasting and nobody really wants to hear that nice you got a car nice you got a house nice you got money and a job you just should if you are around 29 and 30 years old you should have all of those things and then some what you're talking about to me let's like um let's see latin latina said latin said it's basic shit you don't see me bragging about the shit that I got because it's basic shit. You cannot take it with you to your grave. And just like with society, men come and men go. Some of them come with their own shit. Some of them don't. Sometimes the ones that you get that don't come with their own shit is the, it's, it's the surroundings that your ass is in. It's where you met them. Those are the ones that come with a bunch of bullshit and not the right shit, okay? Take me for example. I'm not the perfect person. I don't have everything in the world, but I will come with my own shit. It may not be top grade A shit, but it's my own shit. And I've earned it and I've worked for it and I'm happy that I have it. Now, when you get somebody that don't even have half of that and you don't have to have the best shit to be with me because that's not the type of shit I'm on. But some people like to brag about it and some people like to impress others. Here's my thing, Latina. You date whoever you want to date. Whether it be men of color, everybody's of color, first of all. But if it's brown boys or white boys, whoever captivates you, okay? Whoever captures your heart. However, never force yourself to date anyone that you don't feel comfortable with. That's just like me telling you, well, girl, look, she really like you, Latina. Um, she got her own place, her own car. She's a nice girl. Well, I ain't never been with no girl before. Just try it out. And then you go out with her and you don't feel comfortable with it. That's putting you outside of your comfort zone. You know what I'm saying? You outside of your comfort zone. Me, I've never dated a girl. So what if one was to hit on me? I don't know how I would react. It all depends. You know what I'm saying? She might come very pleasantly and I might have to be eased into it. Who knows? I've never dated a female before. Not saying that I wouldn't. Not saying that I would. But it all depends on who takes your heart. You know what I'm saying? And everybody's always judging somebody. If that's who you like, then that's who you like. If that's what you like, then fuck it. I love it. If you like it, I fucking love it. You know what I'm saying? People always judge other people because of who they are, what they are, what they do, who they like. You know what I'm saying? There's a time and a place for everything, but there's some things that just should not be, and there's some things that should be. You know what I'm saying? And one thing you should be is comfortable in your own skin and who you're around. Never force yourself to be in a relationship with somebody because you feel like the men that are of your own race or your own ethnic group are not good enough because you've met enough of them that don't come through with their own shit. So you feel like you got to go to the white man or to the next man or to the next race. Never feel like that. Sometimes you got to stop and look and think like, okay, where have I been meeting these dudes at? These men of my own race. Where have I been meeting them? Because some of these niggas is thugs and ain't street, ain't, they ain't nothing but street smart. And that's all they can hold is a conversation with you about some street smart shit. So sometimes you got to go outside of your boundaries, meaning other places if you're interested in latina men hispanic men brown boys whatever find yourself a nice place where they have these type of men but are on the more mature level the ones that you have been dating ain't on the mature level so that doesn't mean that you got to go outside your race but maybe you got to go outside of your boundaries your surroundings and find the right type of man now me personally i don't have a man right now and I'm very happy with that. I'm not trying to be stressed out right now. Now, not saying when I do get one, he going to stress me out, but I'm not about to allow it. And I'm not about to allow you to come through with nothing. If you ain't got your own place and your own car and a job, don't even say hello to me or even look my fucking way. All right? Because I will cut you with my eyes so quick, you might fucking need stitches on some realness. So, yes, Latina. Never feel like you wrong because you want to go back to your own race. And don't feel like, you know, you're never going to have a relationship or you're never going to be loved or you're never going to basically... What did you say at the end? Um, um, I just want to find a down-to-earth man. Um, you, con you concluded that you will never find love. Don't feel that way. Um, you know something, though? I would be the first to be honest and tell you, I'm about to be 42. And you know, I've, for years I have said to myself, 
well, I guess I'm going to just be alone. I guess I'm one of those that just are supposed to raise their kids and be alone. Is that the type of life that I want? No, not really. But I have not concluded that I will not find love. I have concluded that I have been looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Is it, is it, yes, that's the song. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Okay? And just like this young lady wrote me, I need to step outside the box and date someone outside of my race. No. It doesn't have anything to do with stepping outside of the box. It has to do with where you at in the motherfucking box and who's surrounding you. Maybe I should step out, out of my surroundings and find the right one. And go somewhere else. It has nothing to do with race. Shit. I like white boys too now. Hmm. They got some fine ones out here in Arizona. Mexicans too. Okay? But anyway, don't feel wrong. And don't conclude that you will not find love. You just got to basically... Be a little bit more pickier and look somewhere else. And sometimes you don't even have to look for it. Hang out other places. You know what I mean? Those are always the best times to find Mr. Right. And maybe not even Mr. Right, but a nice gentleman caller who's mature and is about something. And never worry about what other people are thinking. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Society is really something else these days. I feel so, I just feel really bad about the whole entire Orlando thing. You know, and I'm not going to make this a long spiel about them, but regardless of what your sexual preference is, you should be happy regardless and never let nobody steal your joy. You know, it's sad that there are all type of racism, you know, just like I've been watching Roots on the History Channel, it's on demand. So I've watched that four, um, four series, or four episode series like three times each. And I, I watched the first one as a kid growing up and it was really good. But this one just gives you a whole different outlook on life, you know what I'm saying, or just outlook in general. And here it is, you know what I'm saying, we we as black people, as African American people, um, we sold out our own, we didn't sell out our own race, but we were taking them as slaves. and bartering for guns and weapons and, and selling our black people to the Europeans. You know what I'm saying? And that's wrong. Regardless of what race it is, it's wrong to make anybody a slave. But that's just a form of racism. We as African Americans were not liked by the Europeans or the Caucasians. And it's still to that day, to this day, there are people out there that don't like African American people. And then us as African Americans, we don't like that. It bothers us and it irritates us. I know I get irritated a lot, especially when I've been I've I'm asked by many people, "Well, what are you? What the fuck am I? What how do you think I am? I'm a human being. I'm a woman. What do you think? Well, what is your race? What the fuck does it matter what race I am? Okay, it does not matter. Okay, but I know I get very bothered by that and irritated because me as a black woman. I don't, I'm, I'm not racist to any ethnic group because I just don't feel like, or ethnic, you know what I'm saying, I, or any race. I'm just not racist to any race because we're all human. At the end of the day, we're all human. And there are some people that are just really uptight about being hated on because of their skin color, but yet and still they can bash the gay and lesbian community. That's a form, a huge form of racism. Whether you think it or not, just because you're not hating on your skin color, you're hating on the person that they are. It's the same fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? The same fucking thing. What business is it, is it of yours, of who they lay down with and who they hold hands with? What business is, is it of yours? Is it going to make your life any better if they decide, okay, I'm not going to be gay anymore. I'm just going to be straight. Is that going to make you feel any better about yourself? Is it going to make your life feel any better? Some people, a lot of people need to stay in their fucking lanes and worry about what's going on in their own home front and stop worrying about what other people are fucking doing all the time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love gay people and I wish that we just weren't called gay people or we but I just wish we didn't call them gay people but that's what it is that's what it is but they I don't know about y'all but me personally 
I love to hang out with gay guys because they are so much fun and their their attitude and their spirit is so just uplifting and they're just so happy. And then when you hang around a bunch of females that's straight, these bitches is catty and fucking conniving and all types of shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, well, damn, who do I really want to be around? The gay community, even though I'm not gay, I love them all dearly and I wish them all well. And I just really, really wish that society would stop putting titles on people because we are human beings, okay? And you should never want to tear anybody down for who they are, or any type of preference that they are. And that's it. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now we're going to get on to the next one. Now this one is a long one. And she sent me some pictures too. But this one is a long one, y'all. Mm-hmm. A long one. This is going to be a long one. But it's worth it. I promise. You could call me Vanessa. I'm writing this partially because I need advice, but also because I think writing everything out will help me gain clarity on things. I am 25 and recently graduated college. I have not been in a relationship for four years. I have dated here and there, but mainly my focus um, has been on my studies and working for the past four years. Last summer, I went out with my two best friends and ended up meeting a guy. Let's say his name is Dash. I approached Dash first and basically bagged him. He is a very attractive guy and over the time we spoke, I got to know that he's funny and sweet as well. Shortly after we met and began talking for a couple of months, we wanted to meet up. We had been speaking on the phone and texting a lot. We also FaceTimed a lot, wink, wink. We made plans, I don't know what wink, wink mean, FaceTiming, that must be like some, mm, but whatever. We made plans, um, to meet up one day after I was done with work and he would come and meet me there. While at work, I texted him to confirm our plans and he said he would have to reschedule because something came up. I went on Snapchat and saw that he was he was actually out with friends. To my surprise, he was with one girl in particular in the snaps, which was odd to me because he has no girlfriend. All the time we've been talking, he said he had no girlfriend, but had recently got out of a relationship. I'm not the jealous type, so at the time, I took his word for it and didn't really pressure the issue. After I saw the girl on his snap, I became bothered because I felt like he blew me off to go chill with her. Later that night, I spoke to him about it, and he apologized, and he admitted that that, that girl was his ex-girlfriend. His ex-girlfriend is beautiful. But as I said, I'm not the jealous type and I'm secure in my looks and my qualities. He also admitted that he was still in love with her and wanted to get back with her. I understood and accepted his apology. However, after this, I stopped speaking to him and blocked his number because I didn't want to be a participant in this messy situation. A month or so later, I got an Instagram DM from me. It, DM from him, excuse me. It was the only way he could contact me since I blocked his ass. He was apologizing and basically begging me to unblock him and speak to him again. We began speaking again and FaceTiming every day. Everything was good again. Everything was going good again, and I was happy. A couple weeks into it, I see him post the ex-girlfriend as his WCW on, went on Instagram. You know, um, Woman Crush Wednesday. I like the pic I like the picture he posted and I started following his ex-girlfriend after finding her Instagram page under the comments. I was so tempted to Instagram DM her and show her all the text messages between him and I so she can know that he's full of shit. I got so pissed and spoke to him about this again and he said he was still in love with her. At this point we have been speaking for about six or so months, maybe more. I explained to him that if he could still have such strong feelings for her after so many months of us getting to know each other and hooking up on and off, then obviously he needed to pursue rekindling their relationship. I told him that I am a catch and if he can think about another girl while being with me, they must be soulmates. I told him that it isn't fair to me that he should have a sexual relationship with me if he isn't having an emotional one with me as well as he's having an emotional one with someone else. It doesn't matter to me if they are having sex or not, but
But after I hung up from that phone conversation, I blocked him from everything and deleted him from everything. I really wanted to focus on school and his drama was distracting and upsetting me. Months went by. At the end of April, I got a call and a FaceTime from a number I didn't recognize. When I, te when I texted the number back to see who it was, it was Dash. I was happy to hear from him, but still tied up with school and work. The biggest thing about this guy is that I really do genuinely like him, and I want to believe that he means well. Dash and I get along really well, but it's hard for me to look past his main problem. So now we started talking back again, but I see the ground rules early on. But I set the ground rules early on that we are friends and nothing more. And I avoided and I avoided any sort of sexual contact with him. At first, a couple of weeks back, I was stuck at home cleaning after my graduation party. Dash FaceTimed me and asked if I wanted his help with cleaning. I said yes because I honestly needed the help. When he came, we cleaned up and everything was good. And it usually would be when we were together. Of course, before he left, we ended up sleeping together. We, he had been telling me this whole time that he didn't want his ex-girlfriend anymore and he wasn't looking for a relationship. So I didn't see a problem with us having sex. I'm not one of those girls who needs a relationship to have sex. I've been single for four years. I'd rather be with someone who I don't have a complicated past with. But beggars can't be choosers. Laughing my ass off and his sex is bomb. Anyway, after we slept together, together everything was back to square one with us. Texting and FaceTiming every day. If a day goes by without us speaking, he gets upset. He calls me and gets upset if I don't pick up. All that type of possessive shit. Which really, it doesn't faze me much because I'm very independent and don't need any of that extra shit. Last weekend, he asked me to sleep over by him because he wasn't feeling well. When I went to sleep over, his behavior was strange. He insisted that I come over, that I come sleep over, but damn near ignored me when I got there. He was with me, but we was texting the whole time and being secretive with his phone. I don't have the energy for these things, as I've explained, so I just went to sleep. Anyway, to get to the point, today Dash called me saying he needs to speak to me about something that made him, up, that might upset me. He told me that he wants to know that, um, what? He told me that he wants me to know that he speaks to other girls and that he is single. He said he noticed that I don't ask him him about his ex anymore like I used to and he's wondering why I told him because he told me he no longer deals with her and I trust that he will be honest with me so why would I ask he says that he started speaking with her again on a friendly level and he wanted to let me know I told him I don't have any opinion on the matter because I'm not your girlfriend and I can't tell him what to do but I would appreciate his honesty I want to know what you think on this situation. Am I being dumb to trust him or should I just cut my losses and find someone else? I still talk to and meet other guys here and there, but to be honest, I want to be with Dash. Not as bad as I did when we first met because this situation bothers me. I feel like he wants to be with me, but his ex gets in the way of that. But then again, why would I want to be with a person who has second thoughts about their ex? But then also... We have all been there, hung up on an ex, but also interested in someone new. Then again, it's coming up on a year now. I just feel like I waited for too long for him to come around and thought it might, and, thought, and though it seems like he is becoming more and more into me, I just can't tell for sure because of the nature of the situation. We have only slept together a few times, literally, so I don't think he's using me for sex. Do you think he's stringing me along or should I just keep trying with him or see where it goes? FYI, the Instagram pics are, so she tells me. So, okay, his girlfriend, is she's really pretty. She's at the, um, looks like she, she's in the store shopping. She's really pretty. Um, okay. And as well as that, as the young lady who's right in me is really pretty. So, okay, and as for Dash, well, he's... He's a young kid, so I really can't judge him. He's a nice looking nice looking young man. Um not my type, um, but he's nice looking and her and he look cute together. But she's just as pretty as his girlfriend. His girlfriend has on makeup. So, you know, makeup. The wonders of makeup, okay? The wonders of makeup. So let's go back into the situation. So basically, Vanessa and Dash have met up, 
hooked up a few times. Dash got an ex-girlfriend, but he's constantly going back to her. Yes, I do think, Vanessa, that he's stringing you to fuck along, okay? If his ex-girlfriend was to tell him today or tomorrow or next fucking week or next month, I want you back, Dash. He will drop you like a fucking hot potato and never think twice about it, okay? Let's not get it twisted. The young man is nice looking, okay? And he probably knows this. And as long as you allow him to string you along, the nigga's going to string you along. No matter if he's got it together, he's nice looking, he's got an education, he's a sweet guy, he's put together well, whatever. They are dogs just as well, okay? And maybe that's the reason why his ex is his fucking ex-girlfriend. Because he talks to other women. And he probably betrays to be single to them as well. So maybe there's a reason why. His ex-girlfriend is his ex-girlfriend. As long as you continue the relationship with him, the way things are going, it's just going to be a string along. You're like Geppetto, you know, Pinocchio and Geppetto, your puppet. He's got you on strings. And he's just basically telling you what to do. And you're going for it because you think he's handsome and his sex is bomb. There are many men out there who are handsome and his sex is bomb. And um, their attitude is really arrogant. They are dickheads, they are assholes, they are jackasses, and they are ones that you really wouldn't want to deal with in life, okay? Now, yes, it's nice to have bomb-ass sex, trust me, it really is. But at the end of the day, do you really feel good about yourself? Because if you have to second-guess yourself as to do you really want to portray this with this young man, do you, I mean, not portray this, but do you want to continue this with this young man? and you have a second guess this, then it's not worth it, okay? You block him, you unblock him. You block him, you unblock him. I'm sorry, me personally, once I block your ass, your ass is blocked. I'm not going to be bothered with you. If you hurt my feelings and I find out that you're sneaky and you're doing shit behind my back, then yes, I'm not going to fuck with you. So he gives you attention and he talks to you every day and, he's, and it can't, he doesn't like to go a day without talking to you. When he ain't talking to you, Vanessa, who else is he talking to? Do you really, really know? He could be talking to LaQuisha, Leticia, Linda, whoever else. You know what I'm saying? He's not on the phone with you 24, ever, 24 hours. He could be whining and dining you verbally, mentally, Snapchatty, FaceTimey, whatever. But at the end of the day, he's still not your boyfriend. And if he really wanted something with you, I would think by now... That he would have went out there or went all out and said, you know what? I'm going to get with this girl and I'm going to put the ex on the back burner and leave her alone. Now me, I'm not about to play second fiddle to no motherfucker. If you got an ex-girlfriend that you want to be with and you constantly up her tail and you putting her on your Snapchat or your Instagram as your woman crush Wednesday and we supposed to be digging each other, there's a problem. Okay? There is a serious problem, which is you have not gotten over her. And just like I said, if his ex-girlfriend was to tell him, I want you back, he's going to drop you like a hot potato. And then you know what? You are going to be the one left out in the cold in the pouring rain. Say you two were to get together in a relationship and you guys are getting along real good. A couple months go by. You all heavy into him. and He, he probably is somewhat heavy into you, you know what I'm saying? And then... His ex-girlfriend comes back in the picture. I miss you, Dash. I want to be with you. What's going to happen with Vanessa? Is he going to ditch you and dump you like he did before? Because he ditched and dumped you for the first date meetup for his ex-girlfriend. And he also let you know that he had feelings for his ex-girlfriend still. Which is an honest thing to, go to do, and I commend him on that. However, he's still not being genuinely honest with you. You know what I'm saying? He's still not. He's still talking to his ex-girlfriend. Now... Some people can say you can be friends with your ex. You can sometimes. However, it all depends on how it ended, okay? And how you still feel about that person. If you're still in love with them and you still have hard feelings for this person, then it's kind of hard for you to go into a new relationship and be friends with that other ex still because you still genuinely care for them and you still look at them as the person you really, really love. And it's hard to move on and get into your new relationship. I have never, well, I, I am friends, well, 
I am friends with my ex, not the one that I just threw out. That nigga will never speak to me again, and I will never speak to him again. And if he wanted to speak to me again, I'll cut his fucking tongue out and hand it to my dog, so that way he'll never speak to me. But I would never speak to him if you paid me to, okay? But I do have my other exes who I still speak with. Not my ex-husband. I have not spoken to him in so long, and I pray to God that he's okay. But, um... My other exes, I do speak to them. You know, we can kick it on the phone and laugh. But once I start hearing them talk about, you know, you're beautiful. I'm, nigga, no. Let's not even go there. So, you know, it's okay to have exes as friends. However, sometimes it's not okay because of the situation and how that other person may still feel. And you don't want to be out there left in the cold where his ex-girlfriend is still priority on his mind. And when I say she's priority, meaning he ditched you for her. He stood you up, changed plans that you guys have been planning to hang out with his ex-girlfriend. She called him at the drop of a dime. And I'm going to say she called him at the drop of a dime because you and Dash already had these plans. You've been making these plans for a couple of weeks because you guys have been conversing. And so you finally said, let's meet up. Let's make plans. Let's meet up. So you made these plans. And all of a sudden, when you confirm on that very day that your plans are supposed to take off, he says something came up. The something came up is his ex contacted him and his plans went down the drain with you just that quick. And that's what the issue is at hand with him. My opinion for you is to leave him alone because you're getting strung along. Nobody likes to get strung along. Yeah, it's cool when you find someone that you like and their sex may be bomb and their personality may be that great. But at the end of the day, do you really want to get strung along? Do you want to keep sitting there second guessing or if I could have or should have, would have? No. He will, he will drop you like a hot potato, just like he did already for the first meetup date. That was the first meetup date. Don't put all your time and energy in somebody that's not putting all their time and energy in you as a person. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you an example. The guy that I always, I, I, I don't talk about him a lot, but I have told you guys that, you know, he, he, he's here in Arizona, but he's from Jersey. And, you know what I'm saying? I did say he got some bomb sex. What? What? But to me, he's kind of arrogant. He likes to work out all the time. To me, he's a little stuck on himself. I, I say he's cocky. Not that cocky, but yeah, that too. But his attitude, because he's all into himself. You know what I'm saying? But we, we messed around for a few months. And to me, all I wanted him for was one thing. You know what I'm saying? He does look handsome as a motherfucker. But with that type of attitude, I really, really cannot be around someone like that. And... The situation with him is like this. My ex, the one that I got rid of, like I told you in my sudden breakup video, he freaking texts him, goes into my um, my iCloud on my Mac, because that's where all my phone numbers were stored from my phone, and texts him as me when I hadn't talked to this guy, I spoke to this guy like two years, and pretends to be me. So now he and I, we're going to just call him Jersey, we speak to each other on a daily basis we do but do i want to be with him like that hell fucking no but sometimes a bitch do have an itch that need to be scratched i get it i get it however sometimes we have to put ourselves in certain situations and let ourselves know is it really worth the scratch sometimes you know what i'm saying is it really worth the scratch sometimes sometimes i just might want to stay itching because that scratch just may not be worth it. You feel me? Okay? And nobody likes to get strung along. And to save yourself some heartache, what I would generally do is cut my ties in with him. And I wouldn't say leave it on a friendship note because he seems like the type of person who wouldn't want to leave it on a friendship note. He seems like he'll keep trying to come back at you and come back at you until he's got you back in the sack again. I would leave him alone. And I know I'm just saying it like, leave him alone. Because he's no good. He's bad news. He's in a relationship that he's not in anymore. 
meaning he still has strong feelings for his ex-girlfriend. And she could decide that she wants him back at any given moment. And where are you going to be left at, Vanessa? Holding your heart. And he ain't even going to give a shit because he going to get what he wants, which is his ex-girlfriend back. You're a beautiful young lady and never settle for someone. There are a whole lot of beautiful young men out there in the world. And what you are focused on right now is a good thing because education is hard to come by and quality of a person is also hard to come by. So never compare yourself to anyone else. Yeah, she's beautiful and so are you. And you're just as beautiful as she, which means that you deserve someone who is worthy of you, who knows your worth. That way, you don't have to worry about second guessing and you be their WCW. I know that probably was hurtful to see her up on his Instagram page as his WCW. Oh my God, I couldn't imagine. If I was to see some shit like that, a bitch would be done. I just would be fucking done. Done, finished, I'd be done with your ass. Oh, that's your WCW? Well, nigga, let her be your WCW Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Lose my number. I would leave him alone, cut my ties with him, and just let him know, listen, this um, relationship that we have going on, which is really not a relationship, it's very toxic, and what I need to do is get back to my studies and focus on me. I wish you well, and I hope you and your girlfriend do get back to girl, the, um, your ex-girlfriend do get back together, because I can really tell that you really do care for her, and it's only right. And just like you said, maybe they're soulmates, and maybe they're not. There's a reason why she's his ex-girlfriend. And sometimes, mainly, it's got to do with the guy, or maybe he's just not the person that you really think he is. You know, they all come with a representative. We all do. And some of them stay with that representative, meaning... They will be one way in the beginning and then totally different later on in the relationship. Some of them continue on to be that way, just clouding your vision, just making your vision totally clouded. Trust me, a bitch like me's vision was clouded. I had tunnel vision fucking with that ex, okay? Sorry, ass jackass. But anyway, so yes, that was my video, my real talk for today. And I hope you guys enjoyed it because you know, girls, I can talk my ass off. But anyway, other than that, Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Stay diva and divalicious. Leave your comments below for the young ladies. And as always, I will see you on my next video.